Cheever, the only other car on the lead lap. He's in fourth position behind Sarah Fisher. The white flag is being displayed now as Eddie Cheever, come, or rather uh, Buddy Lazier, comes off the corner, takes the white flag. One more lap to go. He has a 1.2 second advantage on Scott Goodyear as we head for the final lap of the race. And Buddy Lazier is looking to become the first repeat winner of 2000. He has led this afternoon three different times for 49 laps. Good job, Buddy. Good job. Buddy Lazier wins job, buddy. at Hell Kentucky. He's slowly moving up. He started in the back. He's trying to get moved up. Uh, right now, he's in sixth place. and uh, So he's having a good day, not as good as he wants, because he wants to win one of these races this year. And some debris coming off one of the cars. Oh. Heavy, heavy impact. Tom Wood. And Tom Wood's car, part of the front of that car coming apart and heavy impact in the right side of the wall, the front end on the right side at over 180 miles an hour as Wood was running in second spot. And we saw a couple of parts come off the front of that car. And Wood has now slammed the wall hard up in turn three, ridden the concrete around between turns three and four and come to rest there in the middle of the groove, just entering turn four. Well, we got to remember, that, and maybe we can see it here. Oh yeah, definitely something. Uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Something definitely came off the race car, and, and uh, was, was that his or it was off Brandon Irwin's oh, Brandon car? Irwin's car, and his car jerks to the right and tags Wood. Watch him, watch the contact there. Cut his tire, and uh, they make contact, and Wood goes into the wall. Interesting. Something did come off Brandon Irwin's car, but as Tom Wood went in, whether the air came off the car or he had a cut down tire, or something caused him. Right, uh, you can s as they're going down the back straightaway, we can see right here. Brandon's going to go down to the bottom side. Oh, that's exactly right. Oh, the, he, the he, wing, the right front wing. Right front wing. There's the teammate thing that we were just talking about. He cut down Tom Wood's tire with that right front wing. And unfortunately, both cars are done. Both cars are really done and out of, out of a chance. That's that team meeting we were talking about that, Sam, that you don't want to do. And just a mistake by Brandon by running wow. to the back of Tom Wood, cutting his tire down and, and sending him very, very hard. Back at Kentucky Speedway, two to go. P.J. Chesson gets the green flag from Paul Blevins. Can Paul Dana run him down with two laps on a mile and a half racetrack? Can it be done? Well, I, you know, that's as big a gap as we've seen between first and second all day. And uh, that may be tough. We're, we're on the last lap right now. Or I should say that was the white flag lap a moment ago going by. We had two on the screen. Here comes Dana. Here comes Maya out of turn four. Chesson, can Dana, he get it done? Dana's got to run down low, but I don't think he can get it done. Paul Dana on the inside, and Chesson will do it by a car length at the stripe. P.J. Chesson wins two in a row. How about that? The young man who ran in the middle of the pack for most of the afternoon wins his second in a row. Two wins in only five Menards Infinity Pro Series starts. And this young man made it exciting in Victory Lane back at Michigan. I can't imagine what we will see here today in the Pioneer Machine. Worked as a mechanic in Europe giving driving last lessons. Lap, last lap, last lap, last lap. All right, this is it. Fernandez had the lead. He crossed the line two tenths of a second ahead of Bunny Rice. Now down the back stretch. They're in a straight string. If Rice is going to move, this is it. Same for Weldon and Matsura. 
off the final corner. Looking outside, no way. Good job. No contest. Great job. Fernandez takes the oh win. God, His first IRL race. And he does that. Congratulations, Tom Anderson. He does it in his 10th career start. Previous best finish you saw a well moment done, ago boss. was fifth well at done. Texas. He's the engineer they asked to come out of retirement. He helped develop Paul Tracy. He also helped develop the likes of Jacques Villeneuve. He is now working with one Marco Andretti, who is trying to hang on side by side for a second spot with three left to go, and Andretti comes back on the low side. Yeah, and now if you remember, look at both of these cars running around this oval racetrack side by side. When you're on the high side of the racetrack, that's a longer distance. That's why guys always like to be able to keep the car on the low side and protect protect the bottom and stay right on the white line and force the guy to go on the high side. Two laps to go, it'll be white flag for Travis Gregg, who's pulled away by about eight or 10 car lengths, making 12 car lengths. There comes Gregg, and there's the battle for a second side by side. Here comes Wade Cunningham on the final lap. Can the points leader get by? Cunningham's gotta look at the big picture, though he cannot afford contact with that tight, tight point battle and just five races to go. One turn away, they're in turn three and four, side by side for a second spot. There is Travis Gregg, who has led wire to wire. Gregg takes the win, but second spot, wow! I don't know. <laughs> I don't know who took that. The scoring monitor says Cunningham by inches, by mere inches, will finish second and then ready third. Let's check in on the Travis Gregg pit. The white flag is out. How Low can you go, Scott Sharp, holding off Vitor Mira, number 17, goes to the outside, gets a look, tries to get a run. Will this be the lap that Vitor can turn the trick? Setting him up, having a look. I'll make it happen. Look at you go, baby. Look at this happen. Out of turn number four, Mira there takes a look go. at Scott Sharp at the line. Scott Sharp, number eight, the first win this season. The first win for Scott Sharp since Motegi, Japan in 2003, 41 races ago. What an amazing turn of events. Eight different winners this season. But today, on August 14th, Scott Sharp gets the victory as we check in with Jerry Punch. Take a look, Ellen, we have a crash at the first turn after they cross the finish line. It is Koski Matsura and Dario Franchitti. It was after the finish. Dario came across the line in eighth. Koski a lap down in 11th. You saw the close finish for second through about sixth position. It was Dixon, Foyt, Andretti and Schechter, followed by Sharp, Carpenter, and then Franchitti, and then after that, all hell broke loose. Well, I'm not sure what went on with that, but we're gonna have a quick replay of that, so you see, remember, he was trying to get underneath. Oh my gosh, he goes up and over again? Oh, can you count this as lucky or what in the world? That, that looked like one of those hydroplane blowovers. My goodness. All right, here we go. We're going to go on board. Now, the, you're not riding aboard a jet fighter right now when you start to see the sky. Whoa, whoa, whoa. He just checks up and, and touches the tire up and over. Reminds me of a ride in a fighter plane. This is unreal. And there goes the onboard camera. Oh. You know, we saw him take the steering wheel off, climbing out of the car. There he goes flying by that camera. Remember, they're still doing 175 miles an hour just as soon as you get off the throttle going into that turn. And there's Dario again climbing out. So two weeks in a row, he has gone airborne. Listen to the crowd. They just got the view that he's okay. You heard Sendrick. That was you a case, go. guys, of Tim Sendrick giving the dictum and Elio Castroneves not understanding. He backed out of it. Here we go. Final lap. All right. 
So here we go down into turn number one. Elio Castroneves has got to put the hammer down. There's nothing to hold back because here comes Scott Dixon. He has got him in his sights down the back stretch. If there's enough fuel in the tank, this is Elio's race. Here he comes through three, through four, and here comes Dixon. He's flying on the outside. This could be the salt in the wounds. It is going to be Dixon taking the win. Elio looks like he ran out of fuel just as he crosses the line. He's hitting the steering wheel going, what do I need to do to win one of these this year? Second place again. You have Savater doing all this up here to Wade Cunningham. Then you got Hinchcliffe. And Adam got a spin. Oh, Hinch Hinch Hinchcliffe. Mm. Keep it straight. Keep it straight. Let's he not did. see a yellow. It's a yellow oh, flag. We, oh, we do have a yellow. Situation. Oh, we don't need that. Here's what happened to James Hinchcliffe, guys. Watch him down low. He's just trying to keep the car low as he's coming off a two there. Oh, just the rear wow. came around. And you saw Prendeville in a separate incident get super, super high there, and he almost hit the wall. Oh, so I'm good job by those I'm two so drivers. Glad, saving yeah, that. so glad. And uh, you saw Andrew Prendeville get way up high to, to make sure he avoided that. Okay, guys, we're going to go green. Oh, we're going to go green. We're going to go green. Was sleeping. He Here was we, caught sleeping. And Wade Cunningham, no. They no, 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 say no. No start. They say no, so they didn't line up correctly, but you know, since it was a no start, you know, I gotta think that they give up another lap. Uh, uh, the white flag. I, I don't display. think so. The white, the white flag is out. That's gonna be it. Wow, that's controversial uh, because it, we really didn't get to see a finish there if Wade jumped the start. So I don't know about that. Oh, oh man, man. was that a good move by Wade to try and draw that? I mean, you can yeah, you can look at you that. You can look way. at it both ways. So so uh, apparently the, the ruling from race control is that the field was not properly aligned. The entire field. It wasn't just Wade Cunningham. So guys, this Woo, this is a sit down. This is this is a this is a tough way to end a great race. Yeah, that is tough. Oh. We really saw a battle forming there. How unfortunate the last that, that you know, but for Wade Cunningham, a well-deserved victory. Oh my goodness. So, oh. so how many wins does this make it for Sam Schmidt in the Indy Lake Series? Oh, we'll have to count him up. Because a lot, but it's seven for Wade Cunningham, who's had a tough uh, year on the road courses, and he's been very strong in the oval so. Wade Cunningham has won the Kentucky 100. And they come down to get the white flag. One more lap to go at Kentucky Speedway. Wheel to wheel through the corners. It's Carpenter and Briscoe. They go off the second corner and down the back stretch, and Ed has just a slight advantage. Look back there, however, at Kanan and Elio Castroneves. They're battling for the third spot. They come off of corner four. Ed Carpenter has the advantage as they come off the corner at the line. It's going to be Briscoe. Nice job, babe. Wow. Nice job. Great job, Ed. Great job, Briscoe, setting that up. Man. Seeing race after race after race, they are stuck together. Turn four, big crash. A couple of cars collected. They slam into the outside retaining wall. One car might be Ari Leyendijk Jr. Also, we see Daniel Harrington. So there's a third car. Harrington is still heading towards turn number one with the front left wheel askew. So three cars are involved. One of them is Philip Major. The other is Stefan Wilson, so it is not Lion Dyke Jr., another dark-colored car. So we have a yellow on lap number two of 67, just completing lap number two. All of the cars will head down the pit lane because there is debris scattered around turn number four. So we'll watch and see some of the drivers climb out of their car. Well, Pippa Mann and Martin Plowman did not get to the pit entry lane. And now, as we take a look at the, the replay, we caught the, the, the tail end of it as Stefan Wilson's car hits the out outside retaining wall and launches back to the inside of the racetrack. But uh, now Martin Plowman is making his way back around the racetrack. He and Pippa Mann both failed to make it to the pin, pit entry lane. And so uh, Pippa now is on pit road, and Martin Plowman will be there shortly. Okay, we'll keep our eyes on Philip Major down in the turn four area to make sure he gets out of that car. And Jake Query reports from pit lane that he was moving. Here's what happened. Uh, the car spun first. Stefan Wilson's car, I believe, is the one that spun first. And then Harrington collected him and Major as well. So I want to see that one more time, but I believe that it was Stefan Wilson's car that spun first by itself. So it was not contact with cars running by side, side by side. And then the two trailing cars made the contact. So three already outs. And our leader is 
going to be the uh, 11 car of Pippa Mann. Okay, she's shown on timing and scoring at 11, but she has been leading. And as Mark mentioned, she uh, just uh, missed the, the pit entrance, and she took one more lap around. So she'll be moved back to the front of the field. So we'll keep an eye on this cleanup. And while we do, let's head to pit row with Jake Query. She sees the white flag. She's less than a mile and a half away from her first win. Rodrigo Barbosa, not quite as sportsmanlike as Dan Clark as they made their way through turn number four. Pippa had to work a little harder to get past. She works her way to the midway point of the back straightaway, setting up for turn number three for the final time. Pippa Mann closes in on Victory Lane at her 26th Firestone and Delight start. She finished fifth just a couple of weeks ago at Mid-Ohio. Second, uh, make that at Infineon. Second in Chicagoland. Pippa Mann is now a first-time winner in Firestone Indy Lights, winning the Drive Smart Buckle Up Kentucky 100 at Kentucky Speedway. James Hinchcliffe is second. J.K. Vernay is your series champion. He finishes third. It doesn't work until you really get up to speed. It Listen. helps a little bit, but here they come. This is a good-looking lineup here as they come off of turn number four. Stefan Wilson will bring him to the green flag for the first time this season on an oval. Green, green, green. Race number 13 of the 14 that make up the schedule. Remember Good last player. year, Davey, on lap number one, we had a two-car incident involving our pole sitter, Stefan Wilson. But right now, good, clean start through good two. Thing. Well, you see, uh -oh. there, there we go. Hold on to it. Hold on to all oh, two cars involved. Make it three. Make it four. Oh my God. Make it five. There's, there's, and the, there's a car up oh, and that's over. Gustavo. Is that Gustavo Yakim? Yeah. It is. Yeah. And that, there we go. That, there's the cold tires yeah. right there. We uh, see somebody uh, pull out a line uh, immediately. I think it was one of Schmidt's cars and try to make up time. We've seen the leader and Brandon in second lift a little bit, take it easy. We've seen the guy on the outside going for it, and all of a sudden we see cars start spinning. Yeah, so. I think it was Jacob Wilson who uh, he must have just lifted. Um, well, here it is. They were yeah, three wide yeah. momentarily. And yeah. there's Wilson on the yeah. inside yeah. in car number 19. And, and there you go, back to, you know, a rookie being up front. It's tough when your first race, he's a great race driver. We run with him in sprint cars all the time. But, man, when uh, he, he obviously lifted, but then he probably just got on the accelerator too much and got, uh, you know, got on the full tires, and there it went. Well, Brian Clawson, you watched the onboard shot. He did a good job of avoiding yeah. this mess in, in turn number two. But what an unfortunate start to, to this race. Uh, Jake Query? And we're standing with Brian Berlardi, who now can watch what happened with Jacob Wilson, his rookie, making his first start here in the Firestone Indy Lights. You said he was good during the test. He was good during practice. But what happened there at the outset? Yeah, he was fantastic, actually, during our practice. And um, obviously, he qualified third yesterday. We just I couldn't see actually what happened. I'm trying to look at a monitor right now to see actually what happened at the start of the race. So. Did he say anything on the radio once the incident took place? Obviously, he's OK, right? No, he's, he's fine. He did not say much, though. What are your plans for next year? And I know that obviously this is a disappointment, but does he factor into your future plans with the team? He does. Uh, we're we're going to have two cars next year for sure, uh, a potential third car. So uh, he's a very talented young driver, and we're looking forward to moving forward with him. All right. So it looks like Jacob Wilson, obviously a disappointment here, guys. But making the jump from USAC next year, we should see him more with Bellardi and Firestone Indy Lights. Well, no fewer than five cars involved. This was only a 13-car field, uh, so... You see Gustavo Yakiman, who celebrated in victory lane. There's Jacob Wilson, the 21-year-old rookie from Crawfordsville, Indiana, making his first Firestone Indy Light start. Unfortunately, it didn't last very long. And the 13-car field to start this race is now down to just eight cars. And uh, there you see the five drivers involved. Jacob Wilson, who touched it off in turn number two. And... The rear end stepped out on him. Uh, then Esteban Guerrieri, Gustavo Yakiman, David Ostella, and Anders Krohn. Of course, Yakiman uh, just a few weeks ago in Baltimore celebrating his first win in the series. He won't be celebrating today as Gustavo Yakiman's day is done early here in turn number two. Beautiful day, but not a beautiful start to the Kentucky 100 Firestone Indy Lights action. They just, they had a good car today. Uh, the Andretti you know, guys did well, and, and, uh, and, you know, I think he deserves to win. Michael Andretti looking on from pit lane as his driver, Stefan Wilson, Davey, takes the white flag and shaping up to be a great season for this young man. And uh, it, I think really, short of the championship, it's been everything that Stefan Wilson had hoped in 2011. By the way, three-second lead over second place, Mike. Yeah. I mean, yeah. dominant fashion. Uh, Stefan has stepped up. What a great year for him. Wins his first race, wins his first oval, his first pole here. Did a great job. So a lot of firsts for Stefan Wilson this year. His first oval win comes at Kentucky Speedway. 
I think he's happy, Connor. What do you think? <laughs> I would be too. Yeah, no, that's awesome. I mean, it's, it's good to see him win, and uh, you know they've worked they've worked hard this year, like everyone else, you know, and it's you know it's good to good to be rewarded for that. So Stefan Wilson celebrating from the cockpit of the number five. There's your champion, Joseph Newgarden from Hendersonville, Tennessee, just outside of Nashville. He is a champion. Sam Schmidt Motorsports has wrapped up its fifth. Firestone Indy Lights title since 2004. It's Wilson Newgarden Goncalves. That's your podium for this race. was all good when you know, unfortunately, Davey, not a lot of cars finishing this race, but the racing, the cars that were on track put on a good show. Yeah, they did. You know, and, and that's one thing with the series. We know that there's a ladder system before you even get to this series. Yep. The 2000s, Mazdas, and Indy Lights. But you got to remember, a lot of these guys are rookies in this series, and, and not to throw down on anybody. I mean, forever or anybody in this series, it's a learning curve. You're learning, and, and I think everybody goes back and looks at the tapes from, from uh, you know, the very start of this race with Jacob Wilson, what he did, what Ferreira did, why he got penalize it. They'll look at this video, they'll, they'll study it and say, okay, now we're understanding what it takes to drive these. And our leader, Will Power. Now look, he has... Oh, 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 I, was just, oh. I was just gonna say, he does okay. not have a preferred spot. Kevin? It's Anna Beatrice. Anna Beatrice makes contact. Power is in it. They're going ahead with the tire change. Let's see if they have an issue. They're checking the left side of the car. Power is gonna be sent away, but he lost a lot of position on pit road, and he's got traffic to deal with on exit. Wow. wow, Kevin, I was just halfway through the sentence saying that because of his qualifying in Loudoun, he did not have a preferred pit spot, and there was definite contact there. They didn't obviously appear to make any repairs. Wow, what a moment for power. That is how championships are won and lost. Front uh, nose replaced on the... Uh, and a Beatrice car. All right, white flag here. All right, one more lap to go. Carpenter led that lap. Stick with it, buddy. You can do this. Now watch Scott Dixon as he's going to take a look to the outside. Now, Frank Keaty's out of, out of push to passes, and Carpenter has one lap. Oh, that could be the difference. They go down the back stretch and on, buddy. race into Still turn up. number Overtake three. Will Ed Carpenter be able to get his first win in the eyes on IndyCar Series? Here they come to the line, and it is Carpenter. Ed Carpenter wins. How about that? That was good stuff. He finally does it. Second place the last two years, and Ed Carpenter gets the victory. Oh, man, what a finish.